Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Grant Cameron. I'm Tracy Garbett. <laughs> and we have decided to talk <laughs> about split brain because last night we were at the hotel and for all, many years I've been talking about the importance of consciousness in the UFO world and a lot of people thought I'd sort of lost it. But I had a, an experience that sort of pushed me there. I didn't go there purposely. I said, mm -hmm. I remember Jerry Pippen said to me, I can't believe you've gone from nuts and bolts to this. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Jerry, I didn't really go. I got sort of pushed into it. And so I, I've done the consciousness thing. And so when I met you last night, and we started, however we got to the split brain, the right brain, left brain, and then you suddenly said, this was a, a great interest to you, and it was like the first time I'd ever run up against anybody who actually knew what I was talking about, mm -hmm. and real, not only that, but the importance of what this function is. Mm -hmm. And so that's when you and I both had the same idea. I was like, wow, I mean, we were talking, and, yeah. and, and it was like, I've never had a conversation with anybody oh. about this subject in terms of someone who knows what's actually is going on. Uh, it's been so important to me. It's it's been my whole life, and I um, I quickly had to look into it because I I could tell I was an outlier on one side. You know, I was super creative and um, uh, this big sort of abstract thinker, but I saw this pattern over time that sort of felt like a disability that I would become paralyzed when I would try to organize things or, or, or organize in a certain way. I could run into it with essays, I could run into anything that was in the sort of logical order. Um, so I was learning about it myself. My mother knew about left brain, right brain. And the thing about that was later on they started to call it pop psychology, right? That oh, yeah. there was the um, this whole right brain, left brain thing. But it turns out I just went through physiological psychology and I was particularly interested in what they were going to say about this because this was only a year ago. And they're still call they were still calling it pop psychology, even though um, you know they are two parts that are literally split, joined by the corpus callosum, and they now call it right lateralized thinking or left lateralized. But this is because um, they say, well, you're not just using one or the other. There's, there's always this sort of global, you're, you're always using these different parts of the brain. However, they do seem to still have these dominant functions. They, they, will, they still will not subscribe completely to what they call right brain and left brain anymore. So it's even, it's very hard to have this discussion. When I would, you know, I would, I'd want to talk about it more and they're very resistant. So I would just rephrase and say, okay, so there is still something to the right lateralized type of thinking. So, so you're saying that it still is visual, spatial, dominant, you know, and they'll agree. So, I mean, it does exist, but there's so much resistance around the left brain, right brain terminology. Yeah. So it's really hard to um, seriously go into it because there is that pushback. Yeah. But because um, my whole life I felt so far out on the spectrum, I, I, you know, I've, I've had this deep interest and of course I've been observing myself, you know. And uh, I've had one unusual ride, I would say. And uh, I, for the most part, have kept it to myself because people would tend to think I'm crazy. I had one psychologist who um, recognized it right away. Wow. <clears throat> and um, the reason was her son was like that. So she looked into it, she gave me a book to read. And uh, it actually was talking about uh, highly visual spatial people and all of the tendencies they may encounter which included increased intuition and all of these interesting things. But this book is now out of print, but it was basically coping skills for someone who was highly visual spatial. And I, I can't even find it anymore. Um, so, uh, so that's one part of it. Yeah. Then there's the part, uh, you know, my life story. There's, um, as far as careers and school, it's been really hard to fit in because, um, everything is so left brain dominant. The whole academic system is set up that way. 
so what what ends up happening is if there are people who are sort of outliers or they're just um, way more high functioning on the right side, they'll tend to feel like they have a learning disability. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so uh, they'll internalize that because there's there's nowhere they can go to to figure out what's going on. So this was something I was really pushing and trying to advocate for while I was in university just in the last, you know, I just graduated recently. Mm -hmm. Um, because I figure there's a lot of these people walking around silently suffering. They're using all of this extra processing to try to left brain it through their textbooks when that's really not natural. So what's happening, these people will, you know, they'll have their textbooks, but they will, like me, they'll find this other crazy way to, to work through the knowledge. So. I would have to, you know, watch YouTube videos, and I will have to, if you look at one of my textbooks, there's highlights all the way through it. <laughs> I'm circling every five words, so I, because I'll have to go through and read it several times, the next time I go through, I'll have to read the circled words and the highlights to sort of get the comprehension eventually. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's all these crazy workarounds, but I know I'm not the only one. Uh, there are other people out there, but it's it's hard to find them. And I, I actually believe they're sort of suffering, at least if they're in academia, yeah. you know, and they're pushing through in something like that. They're they're silently suffering because they feel less than, yeah. you know, and uh, they are probably this is was my theory before we talked, and you validated this, but. I figured they were probably having some deep intuitive experiences as well. Mm -hmm. They were probably finding that they were very skilled or possibly even having lucid dreams um, out of body. They were just having different types of experiences. Altered states are easy. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if they're like me, uh, you know, I'm super inquisitive, so I, I dug into remote viewing. The only reason why I did that was because my brain seemed like it was producing um, extra sensory information all the time and I, I just didn't know what to do with it you know I, I would just relax and something would open up for me I, sometimes I would see multiple images it would look like I had eyes around the world and um, I to this day I can't explain that but it because of that I, I sort of went on this experimental journey of myself and so I would just enroll myself in anything I could find, you know, um, that sounded like it would explore the brain more deeply. And that's kind of been my life, trying to put these things in some sort of framework and figure out, is there a pattern? Is this what it is? Is it the right brain thing? And I definitely think it's that. Now I've been reading, I mean, this was in physio physiological uh, psychology as well. We were learning about the split brain studies. Okay, yeah. And I was just rereading it, um, you know, um, because there are all the cases with brain damage. Uh, one side's brain damage, so they, or someone's having um, uncontrollable seizures, right? And they'll have to snip the corpus callosum. And uh, then they'll see what happens to the uh, what happens to the patients and these amazing things. You've probably studied it more than I have, but uh, it is like almost like there's two different people in there. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the reports of one hand is, is trying to get dressed and the, the other, other hand is trying to get <laughs> undressed, or right? The smoking one's trying to have a cigarette and the other one's not a cigarette out. Yeah, so <laughs> there are these amazing things when you separate these two parts of the brain so the it just seems like the rabbit hole goes deeper and deeper and deeper we can talk about any of these things there's there's one other thing I want to throw out there okay uh, that Richard and I have actually been discussing when I was um, in grade 9 I moved to New Brunswick and um, I was brought in on some enrichment classes. Uh, I was a top student, even though this was happening. I still, the perfectionism, yeah. I, I had this drive to always be an A student. I was in um, private school when I was younger, so it was just a persistence that I had. So I probably worked a lot harder than a lot of the other students, but it was just a drive to do that well from the early years. But, um, Looking back, I have this something I'm a little suspicious of. I 
was in an enrichment class, and uh, it wasn't until Richard and I were talking about it I realized this. The year before I was in an enrichment class, and it was what you would expect. We were sitting around and we were in a group and we're learning. You know, we're doing what the main group is doing, but we're, we're learning. Um, extra spelling words, extra, you know, this type of thing. In grade nine, I'm in a new province, I'm in a brand new school. I get brought into enrichment and it's solitary. And um, enrichment is typically um, to enhance the left brainer, mm -hmm. yeah. right? The weird thing about this, they tested us immediately for speed reading and speed, com speed reading and comprehension. A right brain person pretty much sucks at reading comprehension. I hate, I, I've never wanted to openly admit that, but it yeah. is true. It's true. We have to find other ways mm -hmm. to figure things out. We can read, it'll just take forever. In these enrichment classes, uh, they were solitary, they tested us, and um, I would have done terrible, but they, but they kept me. And um, I recently reconnected with someone else who was uh, in that enrichment class with me, and uh, I assumed he must have been a strong left brain, but when we got talking, he also is a super, super strong right brain. And so I began to wonder, why did they keep us? You know, if the enrichment is designed for left brain mm -hmm. kids to make them stronger, what was that enrichment class really about? All they did with us for the rest of the time was test us. We, we didn't actually learn anything. This has, this, looking back on this experience, has made me question whether there is some agency or something out there that is interested in finding high-functioning right-brain kids. Do you mean something out there? Or something in, in our world? Or um, in there? our world. Okay, okay. Well, both. Probably, yeah, possibly, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But with this example, this has just made me think if there is something here something about right brain outliers that are interesting to, to someone. Um, I, I don't know. I, this is, I'm saying this in the context of my entire life where I've had a lot of unusual things happen. I've had a lot of um, getting into a lot of things here. I don't mean to interrupt you, yeah. but you're not really telling him the significance of your grade nine experience. Okay. You were tested, 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 tested in the most bizarre, unusual, inexplicable ways all year long by this Russian or Greek or whatever this guy was, who was always alone. You were never in with any other in the Never in, with any other students, not even this other this person. This is not enrichment. This is pure testing. Yeah, yeah. Like aptitude testing, but... Strange types of aptitude. Well, yeah. We I should have been kicked out of the so enrichment good. No, class. No, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So there was something unusual about this. And so looking back on my life with being very astute in remote viewing, yeah, yeah. very astute with intuition, very astute with visions, I saw my father die before he died. I saw, oh, okay. you know, and they're not just things that I think they were psychic. Yeah, yeah. They're things that had complete validation. Yeah. Um, so now I can say that, you know. Yeah. Um, so this is just in the context of the whole thing. I'm now looking back going, what was that about? Maybe this right brain thing is really something that more people are interested in than we realize. Yeah. Well, did the other kid have the same? He is the same. Okay. So yes. you were the two that were being tested. We were the two that were being tested. Yeah. And That's we're both this type of outlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. That's, that's just a theory that... Maybe everyone kind of ridicules this idea of left brain, right brain, and okay. but I think there's something actually extremely significant about it. Okay. That was my point, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I can get into the connections that I've seen, mm -hmm. and I wrote a whole book on this thing, the right brain, left brain thing, and psychics, mediums, okay. UFO people, and this sort of stuff. But I would I like to know, so when you come into the UFO community, you meet Richard. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you saw in the UFO community 
that you went, oh, I know what's going on here, or this fits into the right brain, left brain thing, it's just stuff that, like, it, like you've got the psychic mm -hmm. stuff, so you could have people who are highly intuitive, highly psychic, mm -hmm. and that's what I was seeing, was this thing where I was mentioning Roger Lear. Yeah. It was asked, what's the common thing between all these people oh, yeah, right. with the implants? And he said, they're all right brain creative people, and there's lots of them in Hollywood, and number two, all implants are on the left side of the body, which is controlled by the right brain, which nice. would indicate if that's true. And some of the people I did, I did Yvonne Smith, I did uh, Mary Rodwell and stuff, and most of them, like even um, Kathy Martin said, yeah, I think that's right. I think all the implants are on the right side of the body. I think one of them, I think Barbara Lamb said, no, I'm not sure that's true, but there was that, that thing. And so when I did, I did the book Inspired, so I'm looking at, because um, I had the download experience. I had this right. download experience, and then I, that led me to Paul McCartney with the download of, of Yesterday, and I thought, oh, somebody else got this. And I started getting on that fringe, and I realized that there was all these things, whether it's psychic, whether it's um, mediums, like mediums have this childhood abuse thing. Yeah. where they, they, a lot of them have had abuse issues. And the more I looked at it, the more it looked like it was all the same thing. And then I heard that the CIA calls it phenomenology. Hmm. That it's not UFOs, it's all the stuff. It's remote hmm. viewing, it's psychic phenomena, and it's all the same thing. It's this sort of non-physical thing, and that they're trying to figure out what it is as well. So that's why I'm wondering, when you came in the UFO community, was there something you saw that was very obvious, like, you know, wow, these people are all, you know, they're on this right brain spectrum, and because Lear Lear pointed it out, but uh, I I wouldn't say that anything was overtly obvious to me, other than I found, for example, when I went to contact in the desert, I just felt that a lot of things were still leaning and looking in the left brain direction, and I just thought, where is all of this looking into the right brain side. I mean, immediately, that's what I noticed. But I don't know if I understand exactly what you're asking as yeah. far as did I perceive anything? Is that yeah. what you mean? Like, like there's something different about these people that they fit into this pattern. Oh, because there are, there are the people that are going? You mean, the people are going. You, you have, I would say that in the UFO community, you'd have the people who are into the, the scientific aspect, the, you know, the, trying to appeal. Because they'll say, for example, they'll say, uh, we got to be able to measure this. We got to do this scientifically. Yeah. The scient we got to deal with it scientifically. We got to be able to measure it, and yeah. that's the left brain talking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you remember the 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 dual, the, ex the experiments where they cut the corpus callosum, and I had this with skeptics. I saw this immediately with skeptics, is that if you remember the experiment where they said that when they would ask the guy, they would talk to the they would talk to the right brain, mm -hmm. but the left brain would answer. Or no, they would talk. To, no, they would talk to the right brain. But the, the left brain couldn't pick it up. So yeah. it wouldn't know what the cue was. And then they'd say to the guy, they'd, they'd tell the right brain, they'd send a cue to the right brain, uh, take a drink of Coke. And so the person would drink the Coke, and then they'd ask the left brain, you're when you're talking to a person, it's left brain. So you're saying, what did you pick up the Coke for? And they had this thing called the interpreter. Did you study this thing called mm -hmm. the interpreter? In the, it's in the left brain. It's called the interpreter. And, or the pathological liar, the bullshitter. It's in the left brain. And immediately, wow. these people would immediately make up an excuse. Immediately. And what, what the, the theory was, was that you have, you have a world view. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, somebody rips a hole in the world view. And the interpreter is to fill the gap, is to keep the world consistent. And what they said was, it didn't matter what it was. Uh, they'd, said, they'd, they'd tell the right brain, get up and walk around. And the guy would get up and walk around. Then they'd, they'd talk to him verbally. And they'd say, so why did you get up and walk around? And he'd say, oh, I was... I was you know, I didn't feel well or something like that. And they'd always make an excuse. And it was always wrong. And it was, so they called it the interpreter. It was to fill in the gap. And it, it was always wrong. And it was a bullshitter. So to me, that was the skeptic. It's like when you have a wow. thing and the skeptic suddenly, it's like this, this, and they'll immediately come up with an explanation. And skeptics are all left brain analytical people who are saying bullshit. And immediately they'll say that. And if you, if you look it up, it's really interesting. interesting. And yeah. they did all these experiments one after another of talking to the one side when the left brain couldn't, didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And, and then they would ask the left brain, why do you do that? And it would always immediately make up an excuse why it did it. And it was always wrong. And the skeptics, it's like, they're always wrong. Wow. And so I would see things like that. Yeah. And, but and the psychic thing was, was kind of obvious. Where yeah. 
and I got some some reassurances. Like I don't know if you've ever seen the Jill Bolte Taylor interview. Yes. Oh and, yes. And that one, when you see that, the yes. right brain, left brain thing, where she's she's this very sort of left brain person yes. working at Harvard University in the brain bank, and then suddenly the left brain is shutting down. It's being flooded with, and then suddenly she's in in the the oneness thing of the universe, and it's like wow, you know. And then and then the left brain comes back online and says, "You're in trouble. Yeah. You better do something. Yeah. You're in trouble." And then and then she's back in the left brain. She's going. This is so cool. How many neuro neuroscientists can watch themselves having a stroke? Yeah, and then, yeah she was and, able to observe herself. Yeah, and so she's yeah. going right brain, left brain, and then when she went into the, when she had the, the shut down, the left brain completely shut down with the, with the stroke, with the blood, for eight weeks she's in the, the right brain, and she's drooling, yeah. and her mother's taking care of her, yeah. and she's, she, she, the brain hasn't come back online, and she said there was absolutely no fear whatsoever, yeah. and, there, and, there wa and there was no judgment, right. and uh, it was, she was in utopia. And she, could, uh, she couldn't really understand the people who were approaching her in the room, but she could tell, tell what kind of mood emo they emotion. were in. Yeah, she could read it. And yeah. she could, she would whether either have cared. a sense of yeah whether they cared and whether she wanted them near her or not. Yeah, it, it was that. Yeah, that, that was really a very struggled. revealing interview. Where it you, was where you yeah. see this whole thing and that and so you start putting that in there, and it it's just so clear. It's so when you get these people who are doing the lucid dreaming, doing the uh, the dreaming, or if you even get like they ask Joe McMonagall. Yeah. How does remote viewing, and he's like number one, uh, yeah, he's like top yeah, guy, and he yeah. said, how does it work? And he said, you got to shut down the ego mind, and that's yeah. the left brain. So yeah. you get this guy saying that, and then you get Dolores Cannon doing the regression thing, and she'll say, you got to shut down, what's it, Mr. Stupid, you got to shut down, mm -hmm. and that's the left brain. And it's, right. So you, whether it's meditation, whether it's hypnosis, yeah. whether it's psychedelics, the people with psychedelics, they say, they take psychedelics, and boom, first thing that happens, the ego was crushed, and I realized everything was al alive and conscious. Yeah. And, and you get that kind of stuff. And so I saw these similarities and I'm going, like, wow, this is unbelievable. It's absolutely as clear as day that it's this right brain, left brain thing and that the UFO people fall into that, that right brain category thing where they, whether they've been dragged over or what yeah. happens. So that's why I was wondering if you, from the outside, because you came in late into the thing, yeah. Where I've sort of always been in it, right? And so it's a fight between the people who are experiencers, Ye who are seeing visual, yes. versus the skeptics okay, who are yeah. the right brain. We got to do this. We need some rational left brain thinking. Yes. And it's like, no, we need exactly the opposite. We need to shut this stuff down. Yeah. The skeptical, you know, questioning thing. Right. And you're right. Like that. That is a major thing that's happening. So if you go into any of the experiencer groups, this is where you will notice. You, you do have this profound openness. You know, that is something that is in common with these people. They are more abstract. They are, you know, this other kind of thinker. And um, some of them are very traumatized, but um, you can just tell by the way they speak. It's not that linear sort of... Mm -hmm. um, it, there's something different, you know. So these are more right brain. We were recently in Phoenix and uh, we were talking to an experiencer who interviews experiencers and uh, so I was running this by him, you know, because I was talking about gr dream contact and my theories that people who were heavily right brained were ha possibly having more of these and uh, so I was curious if he was by any chance. I said, are you this? Are you that? Or how's reading out of a textbook? You know, yeah, yeah. what's the easiest way for you to learn? Would you go to YouTube first? Would you, would you ask someone to explain to you first? Or would you go through a textbook? And he's way off on the, yeah. you know, that end as well. And so I thought, wow, you know, I, I think there is something to this. Asked another person, yes. Asked another person, yes. So it's not just me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um... But yeah, that is major when I think back on it yeah. inside the experiencer groups. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or even there's a, there's a thing that with, when you get in, you're talking about dreams. Yeah. So you get Bashar, and I watched the, this Chandler Bashar, and I remember yeah. the, the one thing familiar. he said, he said, the re, the, because people are saying, well, I have this dream thing, and he said, the reason we come to you in your dreams is because now you're in our world. Okay. And, and so experiencers will come to me and they'll say, I don't think I was abducted. I just get dreams. And then I say, oh, 
have you got any other weird experiences in your life? And they go, oh yeah. And they start telling you, you know, they had, yeah. had something happen here and they were psychic and they picked this up. And it's like this spectrum that they're yeah. over there on that side. Yeah. Even though they think that they're they're not really involved and they're being very, very rational and analytical. They're sort of trying to second guess this stuff and they fall into this pattern. Yeah. 